What's going on everybody, it's Denver and welcome back to my channel. So today I would like to introduce you to a pretty cool tool for WebXR that basically allows you to create augmented reality and virtual reality experiences with literally zero code, which uses drag and drop features. And yes, you heard that right, zero coding skills are required. I also wanted to give them a big thanks for sponsoring this video. So WebXR Tools, thank you very much for doing that. First, let's go ahead and kick this off by going over three major features that they provide, which I think are really, really important to go over. The first major feature is VTO, which stands for Virtual Try It Out. And here you can display 3D objects such as characters, products, sculptures, and so on for the web and also in augmented reality. Links or QR code for sharing functionality is also available. You can also drag and drop hotspots onto your 3D models. Fully UI customization with CSS and HTML is also available. And lastly, you can copy and paste experiences that you built previously within iFrames, which I'm gonna show you today. The second major feature is IXB, which stands for Immersive Experience Builder or Web VR. And this feature, you get real-time preview for your VR experiences. You also get full control over styles and icons, also by using HTML and CSS capabilities. And lastly, you can also add 3D renders, images, audios, videos, and all by simply using dragging and dropping functionality. The third major feature is Web AR, and this one stands for Web Augmented Reality. It's a very common one, so you probably are really familiar with that term. And you can use the rear camera or front camera to basically create different effects. You can also customize the UI, such as the landing screen and loading screen. So don't worry too much about getting caught up with all the features that I mentioned, because we're gonna be building three different demos by using VTO, IXB, and also WebAR. All right, guys, so let me show you how it looks like when you first log in. So you're gonna see basically your projects in here that you have already created. I have two different VTO projects, which are the virtual try-it-ons. And in your case, you might not see anything at the beginning, but then if you wanna create a new project, just click on that. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and name my project. This is gonna be App Store. We can just say Preview, or you can say App Store just by itself. I think it's fine. And then you select the template, the project type that you want to use. We can do VTO, 360, or Web AR. We're gonna do all three of them. Just let's just start with the VTO. What this is gonna do is gonna set up the entire environment for you to begin with. We're going to see right here on the left side, a loader, also all the different models that are going to be part of this default template. We also have in here, if you wanna do a mobile view, if you wanna do full screen, if you wanna do a preview of how it's going to look on the web, if you wanna do an edit, you can also preview it on how it's going to look on, the, on a mobile phone. And you can also hit view like project and publish, which basically is going to generate a link that you can share as well. So what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and go back into edit and let's change this thing and make it look cooler. So I'm just gonna change this to be Y on the background. The background image, if you wanted to change it, you can do that. I'm also just going to change the logo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and upload the Apple logo. So just go ahead and double click on that logo. And then as soon as you upload it, you're gonna see it. You're gonna be able to select it. You can also change the sizing here. We can say something like 40%. And as I'm working on it, you can go into preview, you can just change here just to see how it's gonna look on the mobile version versus desktop. You can also change here the select effect. You can also change it back to bounce. If you wanna set it to none, you can set it to none. I'm gonna just leave it like that. I think that looks clean and nice. The next thing that you can do is I'm gonna go ahead and rename this model. This is gonna be my MacBook Pro 2011. And then just go ahead and hit save. I'm also going to change here, I don't like that. I'm gonna make that one maybe a little bit of a light gray. So you can change the background color of the header. I can also just go ahead and add my Apple logo in there so it just looks like it's consistent. And maybe I'll just make this one a little bit lighter. Then if I click here on the background, I can also change this to be maybe a little bit darker, maybe a little darker than the header. And then I can also change the model and the model is going to support basically all these types. So if you're looking here, it says GLB, GLTF, FPX, and so on. So in here I have one already for 
my MacBook Pro, which is a GLB file. Just go ahead and select it. And this is gonna have a maximum of 10 megabytes on the free version. Just know that the pay version includes more of a, I think it's a higher limit. I don't know what it is. I think it's 50 megabytes, but I would recommend to check with them just to make sure. And then once you select it, you're gonna see this beautiful MacBook Pro that displays in here. You can also go in here and change a couple more things. We can also select the HDR. And for the HDR, I have two of them. One of them is gonna be this one that has the Paris tower. And then I also have this one that has different clouds. So let's go ahead and do, we can just do the Paris one I think looks cool. So go ahead and browse to that location. And then we can just select my texture in there for the HDR. And then we can just go ahead and select it. You're gonna see that now we get these reflections which just make it look really really cool to be honest so the next thing that you can do though is you can also add control limits so you can go in here if you notice if i were to use a scroll in just to zoom in and scroll out i can only go so far right and i can also adjust this if i wanted to zoom you know more you can also change the minimum you know the minimum zoom if you wanted to do that you can also if you wanted to do 200 percent you can actually zoom in really really close Maybe you want your product to be displaying all the different icons. So I think for this one, we can do something like 180 and then maybe something like that works. Just make sure that you change it to mobile just to make sure that things look great on, on both of them. And then I think that looks good. You can also do horizontal rotation if you wanted to constrain that and also vertical rotation. I think you're gonna leave it as that. I think that looks good. The other thing that I can also do is I can also add a model description and then for that I have some information in here that I'm going to just go ahead and paste it and this is now an M2 I just put an M2 in there just for just for as an example and then we can also add some description and I can also add that you can see that this is placed right in there I can also this is fully HTML so I could basically just make this come out by just adding basically a bold tag right on the header of actually of the description so we can go ahead and tap and you can see how that changes i can also come in here and say okay i want this to be an h3 and then i can also do an h3 here and we can also make sure that that is typed correctly you can see that that changes the header so you can use full html in there and then what i can do here i can close it i can reopen it so that just gives you the basically that preview the next thing that I can also do though, is I can also modify this. Maybe I wanted to say learn more instead of read more. Maybe I want to change this to be something like black. And then maybe you want to link this to be, I don't know, apple.com. And then I think that that works. Just make sure you spell that right. And in fact, I have that entire link in here for the MacBook Pro. So that way we have this link correctly. You can also change the text color and also you know determine whether you want to show that or not. You can also change that. I can also change this in here if you want to add the air mode so we can see that in AR. We can just change it to air mode. And then I like the color. I like the background. And if you want to change the title in here and also the text, you can also do that. Also the mobile view, you can also change that information as well. So that's what that gives you. The other thing that we can also do is I can add another model, right? Let's say that this one, I wanted to do something different. So in this case, for this one, we're going to do different model that I have in here, and that's gonna be a mobile device. So let's go ahead and select it here. And I believe I have an iPhone in here. Maybe it's under, there we go, Apple iPhone 13 Pro Max. And just gonna go ahead and wait until it is uploaded and just go ahead and select it. And you're gonna see how this is gonna be, I think it's gonna be gigantic because of the 3D model that I got was just really big. But we can go in here to the control limits and we can change here. Maybe this is going to be, we're going to allow it to be a lot smaller, which is what this shows you. And also you can do the same thing here on the HDR. We can do, maybe we'll just do the clouds for this one, just to do something a little bit different. So we can do the industrial sunset. Let's go ahead and select your HDR and then just select it. And now we should see a little, you know, little reflections in here on this area. For this one, I'm gonna also change iPhone 13 Pro. Just make sure that that is set up correctly. So if we go back to this model though, there's a couple of things that we can also do in here. 
If you wanted to add a hotspot, we can also add a hotspot in here. And you can see that those labels are nicely stained in there. So that should allow you to do the labels. Another thing that I can also do though, that I wanted to show you, if you go to settings on the top, you can also change the project name, you can change the description, you can also change the thumbnail. And this is important because if you share this experience, that's what's going to show on the person, you know, when you share it. And then also the render mode. In this case, there's two different render modes. One of them is going to be the one that I have in here, which is native and also one for cross platform. I'm going to leave it as native. And also if you want to do custom CSS, you can also do custom CSS. So let me show you how that works. This also has IntelliSense. So if you wanted to do IntelliSense in here, maybe we just do background and then type it in. And then it basically gives you all the different options that are available. And then the UI elements, you can determine if you want to show the header, if you want to show read more, if you want to show basically the AR mode. And you can see that now my button here is red. If I go to the preview mode, you can also see that that's red. So if I wanted to go back and remove the CSS, we can just basically just go ahead and remove all of that and then hit save. And you can see that now that went away. Another cool feature that they have that I really enjoy, if you click on edit model, you're going to see that it's going to allow us to basically edit this model, but it's going to allow us to change the colors. I can also go in here if I wanted to rotate certain things, you can do that. You can also scale it. I don't want to scale or change the model. So I'm going to leave it like that and then just hit on um, save changes. And you can see that now we have a new version of this showing up in here, which is really, really cool and powerful. So another thing that you can also do though, is I can also add an iframe to these. And this could be something like, okay, I want to see accessories for maybe for these. So I have a link in here that I'm going to show you by linking to the Amazon website. Let's say that you, you wanted to have something like this, right? Where you're selling a product and you want to show different accessories for that product. So we can do and basically put the URL in here, which is going to be an iframe. I also have a label and then let me go ahead and try that one more time and just go ahead and save it. There we go. And what I can also do here is I can test it, right? You can see that the iframe is going to open up Amazon, but it's too big. I don't like that to be that big. So another thing that you can also do is we can say, okay, I want this to be, I think I set it to be about 60 by 60. And I think that gave me a better view of how things look like. And you can see that now we have this iframe showing up in here. We can close it and we can look at this. I can go back into my other model and everything looks great, right? So what about testing this and running it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save it. And it's going to say the project. You're going to see here that it shows basically a green check mark. So once you're ready to share it, we can click in here. So this is going to be the link that you can share with people that you want to share that with. So let me show you how that looks like when we run it on my mobile device. You can see how I can look around. We can basically zoom in. We can select some of the different areas, audio speaker. We can also do that. How about the touch bar? Touch bar is working. We can also look at information about these product. We can also learn more if we wanted to select that. And then I can also look at the next product in here. You can see iPhone 13 accessories. What if I wanted to look at the accessories for this phone? You can see that it shows us the iframe in there. And then another thing that I can also do though, is I can go back. Let's say that I want to show and, and actually look at these in augmented reality. We can basically select AR mode. You're going to be able to see these now basically opening in augmented reality. I can basically place it here around my desk. So here's the same demo running on my iPhone 13 Pro. You can see that we get AR mode is allowing us to also place it in augmented reality. I can basically rotate it and place it anywhere in my room, even on my, on my desk just to see how it will basically fit in. Now let's go ahead and create a different project type. It's going to be a 360. This is going to be Apple Museum Demo. And just go ahead and click on Create Project. If you want to add a new image, I'm going to basically add an old Macintosh. I think it's the 128K is the one that I wanted to do. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right over there. 
and then we can go ahead and browse for our image. Here we can say, okay, what is the image that we're going to be adding? And I think I have it somewhere in here, Macintosh 128K, which is a pretty old Mac computer. So for building a museum, I think this is a place to basically do that. So this is cool, but you're like, oh, but it doesn't look right, right? So we can do something cool here. We can say, okay, I wanna just go ahead and change the Y axis a little bit. So what if we wanted to add a link? We can just say, okay, I wanna link that to www and then apple.com. Just for demonstration purposes, add basically an iframe for that. Maybe we add it right about here. And then I also have the link for that. So we can say, okay, this is gonna be linking to this experience. And you're gonna see that, wow, now I can also add an experience within this 360 demo, which is really cool. What I wanna show you though is now if I go into preview mode, now I can, if I wanted to zoom in and I wanted to look at this model, I can look at this model, which is really, really crazy. I can also zoom in. And if I had hotspots, everything will work, right? Just like if we were interacting with this on the web. So basically it allows you to add images. You can add iframes of your own experiences, which is really cool and really powerful. Another thing that I can also do that I really like is if I wanted to add a video here, let's say that I wanted to promote my content and I wanted to add a video of something that I did in the past, I can do autoplay, I can do loop, you can change the size. So it's going to basically show the video running. We have our image here. We also can do basically clicking here to go to apple.com. I can also, you know, I can also zoom in, in here and get a little closer to get a better peek. Can look around. So let's go ahead and do a web AR experience. I'm gonna call it a Star Wars demo. And then we can just select web AR and then just click on create project. Let's go ahead and do color and then just do white here. And then for the actual image content, I'm gonna change this and I have a Mandalorian icon in here that we're going to be using. The width on this one, I think I'm just gonna set it to be not eight, but 80%. And then that's going to show you that. The text CTA, I'm gonna change it to be black. Let's go ahead and do uh, basically something simple. The front camera, I'm gonna be using face tracking. You can also use head tracking, which is going to work with what I'm gonna do, but I wanna show you that I can use joints. Looks cool. I'm also going to be replacing this 3D model, which is going to be replaced by using a helmet. And you can see that now we have the helmet in there. And this is going to, there's two different templates for the basically face tracking. The one that I selected allows you to select joints. So you can basically select the joint. I'm gonna leave this one to be, I think we can just do the forehead and just add an offset. And the offset is just gonna be basically by changing the transform position of this. We got our Mandalorian logo, a star experience. I want to allow the camera because we're gonna be using this for a selfie. And you can see that now we have here the Mandalorian. Yeah, and we also have the animation happening behind the Mandalorian helmet. Also the look of this helmet looks really cool, but you can see how easy it is to develop your own experience in no time. All right guys, so that's a wrap up of this video about WebXR tools and how you can use the different template types. Also, be sure to check out their website by going into webxr.tools and signing up for the free version. And if you have additional questions about it, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much, guys.